Hello there, everyone, and welcome back to TNO The Last is of Europe. I'm your host, Mr. Mokalever, and we're not exactly where we were, or where we left off in the last video, because I've played around with this quite a bit to see what we could do in terms of trying to get healthcare and social security passed, and ultimately, we have to use cons commands, unfortunately, because this is nearly impossible to do. Basically, at least for this campaign, it is impossible to do. We've done a lot of the stuff here, like normal. Um, I'm not on any of these routes yet, but I'll do these off-screen a little bit more as well. Doing any of this stuff really doesn't mean too much, because we're going to... using Basically, we have to use cons commands to get both past Medicare as well as Social Security. It is what it is. Whatever. But we're putting God back in schools. Our predecessors have purged American schools of two vital qualities that make them great. Segregation and the Christian faith. Brown v. Board, Angle v. Vitale, Abington School District versus Champ, all these rulings by our burgundy bribe court have undermined our educational system and threatened our children's future. Our school children may be divided by color, but they are truly united in prayer. Today, God and America's children are going to return to the rightful place, segregated school districts. President Walson will embark on a speaking tour of Southern high schools, alongside sympathetic Christian leaders like Jerry Falwell, Bob Jones Sr., Pat Robertson, and W.A. Chriswell. We'll also expound on the importance of our Savior and our traditional domestic institutions to America's youth. He shall swear to them upon Scripture itself that he will protect the integrity of the schools and lead them to a broad future. Because right now we're going to uh, support civil rights counter-protests. There are many Americans who reject the civil rights movement, whether they agree with the segregation or simply reject the hooliganism of its opponents. These true patriots continue to stand up while enduring appalling abuse from the so-called supporters of equality. We must give aid to these forces, such as providing them with police protection and giving them more support to state troopers to help out or put down the violent mobs opposing them. And then, we're not going to segregate the curricula yet, but we're going to encourage, or I encourage you to follow the southern states. President Walls believes in states' rights. A state should be able to make their own decisions, especially when it comes to an issue as important as segregation. That said, the southern model has proven itself time and time again is the most effective model for the American people. President Walls encourages the states of this great union to adopt the system of separate but equal treatment in all regards, most importantly, education. Are the children not our future? By God in heaven. Wallace and LeMay sat apart from one another in the Oval Office, both staring at the same set of reports that have come this morning from the Communications Office. The report showed a detailed graph of a continuously rising line only to begin tapering off, popularity reported as measured within Louisiana. The next one, South Carolina, then Georgia, Florida, all say in the same decline. Bad word, President Wall said as he rocketed from the chair across from LeMay. Gosh darn it, what do we do now? He boomed into the room. Well, sir, the reports don't necessarily sign a death warrant for us yet, he said, as well as turned to his vice president. What do all these states have in common, he asked, as he took out a Bible from the president's desk. The presentation was about to begin at Madison County High near Jackson, Mississippi, where the governor of Mississippi, a Baptist pastor, and thousands of people behind him gathered to try to capture and witness the mysterious event. The governor stood up to the podium, announcing to the crowd, Good afternoon to the great and powerful citizens of Alabama. President Walls has decided to renew his duties as president to help the people of Mississippi. President Walls and, pa and Pastor Martin, the pastor and the president, both stepped towards and forwards their microphones. Walls laid his hand upon the time of the Bible. President George Corley, Wallace Jr., Do you swear by the Christian God that you uphold your duties as president of the United States? The pastor asked. I do, the president said, as some found it hard to contain their applause. Do you, President Walls, swear by God and maintain a firm and powerful hand against the powers which seek to undo our God given freedoms? I do. There are those in this country that stand to undo our freedoms, and I will not bow down to them. The cheers grew stronger. Will you use the powers vested in you by the Constitution to uphold tradition and morality in a corrupt and dangerous age? I do, Pastor Martin. In fact, I swear not only by God, but by each and every one of you that I shall fight for your rights, your freedoms. I am no limp spine politician. I'm a believer in God and in this country. If you want segregation, you shall have segregation. You are Americans, and blacks will not, get, will not go where you say not to. Assistants gathered, abandoned, uh... A gathered abandoned their respectful silence, collapsed into fervent applause and cheers for the President of the United States of America as he stood strong, with his hand gripping the Bible at this point. They ate it up. Wallace's voter base started to become more content with the state of the state's rights and stop whining. Still, the whining activists marched out on the streets, demanding that the Democrat leader said a will of the people be overturned. Still, they damaged public property, blocker highways, and callously beat up good, honest Americans no more. It's time to throw the book at him, lock him up, smack him down, do whatever needs to be done to shut him up, and if any demonstrator ever lays down in front of my car, I'll be the last car who ever laid down in front of him. On the road to freedom, President Walls sat eagerly watching the TV set in his room. There are black and white images of the largest hospital in Kansas in the background with the governor of Kansas up front, giving a speech about their achievements and announcing that the hospital had finally become fully privatized under the relaxation of federal regulations. And to this achievement, we must congratulate the efforts of President George Walls in allowing our state to govern freely to the consent of her people. Wallace watched the screen with awe and pride. Finally, the true patriots within the country were finally realizing the potential within the governance of the president. Wallace had not wanted to earn the title of tyrant or supreme leader, no. Wallace pictured the title he wanted, Butcher. Not of the people were swine, but of the federal ties which had 
are going to choke the life out of the nation's economy and its people. Americans could finally take a Sunday stroll without necessarily wondering if the feds were going to be breathing down their neck. And even better, Wallace's phone had been ringing out the hook, new prospective Democratic senators and representatives were questioning and pondering the notion of conversion. With the executive branch in line, it was only a matter of time until the legislative was involved. Wallace began rotating the dial of the rotary phone to a variety of different numbers. Eventually, he heard the phone begin the call. Hello, Mr. President. He heard Curtis LeMay's voice on the end. What's next for states' rights? Also, there was another comment saying that, why don't you invest in Russia? I always forget to invest in Russia. It's just don't, it's just Russia, you know. Who remembers? Dixie stand. The crowd was decidedly larger than at his last inauguration. A lot more supporters cheering from the front, and a lot more direct tractors are protesting at the back. This pleased George Wallace as he swore his oath upon the Holy Bible. He'd been worried about that he wouldn't get this far, yet America clearly placed his trust in supporting him and his determination to do what needed to be done. That was all the motivation he needed to steal himself at the coming term. Four years ago, I came to use an insurgent. I stood as a lone voice in resistance against those who would seek to erode our great Anglo-Saxon identity. <coughs> you, the people of the god bless United States, stood up and joined me, and together we secured the future of our culture and our liberty against those who would risk it all in the name of progress. Now, once again, you have placed your faith in me, and I vow in the name of God Almighty that I execute your will. There are still those among us who will choose to squander the many boons that have been given in the name of naive idealism. I hope that after today they will reevaluate their position. You and I together have shown them the true will of the people and our will will not be silenced. In the name of freedom, in the name of ex true American way, we will stand firm against what uh, that which would seek to divide us. The crowd roared, equal parts cheer from the front and boos from the back. Countless banners wave furiously in the white and be they the stars and stripes, states flags, the battle flag of the Army of Northern Virginia. Wallace grinned with pride as he gazed upon the myriad masses who had come from all over to see him. These were the men who had built America with their own hands, the women who had birthed and raised these men, and the children who would one day inherit the American legacy. With them on his side, the path was ahead was clear. It was time to finish work. Segregation now, tomorrow, and forever. We'll, we'll see about that. But also, I let you know, um, we're not going to do this one just because we don't need to, uh, at least for the Social Security part, just because right now, we already have all the Republicans with us. So, um, additionally... I did see the event files in the game. Um, this is, I think, destined to happen. This is, you have different options here, and you can actually work with Goldwater, but the way the game's already been set up, he's going to be butting heads against us no matter what, I guess, for now. And same thing for Encourage Elephants, actually. Like I said earlier, we'll have to use con we have to use Consequence no matter what. So, um, there's two options you can get here, and I'll show you the event for this one as well when we get there. So, um, yeah, it is what it is, but basically we'll have to use Consequence. I apologize, but we'll also do more, more, more. Just because, well, we mostly can, and then that will barely give us 50 senators to get healthcare reform done, as with the Social Security expansion as well. But I do want to say that I I understand why it's set up like this, where you have two major pieces of legislation smashed together. But I wish there was another approach, and not just for Wallace, but for any other U.S. president, to either have two options. One, you can do a small little pieces and chunks to get, you know, Social Security and Medicare, whatever, and or education. Or you could do a, a route like this, where you try to shove as much crap into one massive bill as possible. I wish you had two approaches, but maybe that's just The me. elephant and the eagle, President Wallace. Lyndon Johnson stood in front of Wallace's desk in the Oval Office. Another's man of the South, but an R.D. snake and Yankee sympathizer. Perhaps the only thing holding us back from a true MPP stranglehold of the South, yet ironically, possibly the only chance we have of getting this bill passed. Two kingmakers, but there's only room for one king, or was there? Senator Johnson, I'm very pleased to see you here. We need to talk about bills, mainly my Medicare package. Johnson scoffed almost immediately, crossing his arms. Let me guess. Free health care for the solid South, while the rest of the country rots from the poverty you failed to address? Don't push this horse crap on me, George. No, no, no. Now, I know that you lot, uh, will re resign me to a crazy tradition of segregations, but I'm a man of the people. You and I both know the importance of universal health care in this country. The Negro in our urban centers will have the same care as John Doe in any town in USA, of course. If you want to be known as the man who walked out on health care for all Americans, even your constituents be my guest. <clears throat> Johnson looked furious, but then sighed loudly. The raging bull contained the package, uh, in the uh, in the package of LBJ had sub subsided. His expression finally seemed to budge slightly. Let's talk details. If it's satisfactory to the goals of my party, and not just some long-winded excuse to push your nonsense agenda, perhaps we can make some progress. Another victory for the Wallace administration, which gives us three more Republicans, which makes us able to get everything passed, because we're going to finalize the act. And Kurt and I did cheat, like I said, to uh, do this, because there's no way you can get it fairly. At least for our this campaign, apparently we can't do it fairly, so... Um, Battle for Russia Eastern. If you want to read about this, please go ahead. Let him fight. Pretty much. So, yeah, I, I don't like using cons commands, but this is definitely not the first time I've had used cons commands, in, especially playing as a president in TNO. And I know it's not going to be the last, so. Operation Porcelain here. No spirits going to help. There you go. I don't think you'll need help, but whatever. Because there was a comment saying, why don't you help him out? Why don't you help him out? I'm like, Cause I forget. like I said earlier, I forget. <clears throat> Who do you work for? Yourself. And the Social Security Bill passes, which is actually completely fair, as well as the Medicare bill passes, which is. 
totally, totally fair that we totally didn't use cons commands for, but today is presented as approved President Wilson's proposed social security program, which will provide old age survivor and disability payments to every American citizen paid through your uh, payroll taxes. The Senate has made the right decision, the President Wallace said in the White House press room just a couple of hours after the votes were cast. And after the Senate's bill tomorrow, all working Americans will be able to rest easy knowing that they'll have guaranteed income after they retire if they're injured on the job. The bill passed the Senate despite fierce opposition from many corners. That was it for capitalists and fiscal conservatives that decried government intervention and the massively increased federal budget Social Security would entail, while others on the left are angry that the program doesn't go far enough. However, Social Security is now a reality, and soon government offices will begin issuing ID cards and mailing checks to those that need it, supporting the American worker even after retirement. So, we'll get low pensions, going to hurt our costs, whatever. Because we pass a bill, we'll become more popular nationwide, expenses will rise, poverty rate will go down quicker, slight increase in social funding, um, reduce effectiveness of integration because we segregated it, become more popular in the southern states, and the rest of the bill will make us less popular in non-southern states. Increases uh, social funding which is weird, uh, because it took spend, 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 it could cost more, but poverty will get better, will become more popular nationwide, inflation will go up just a little bit, and increase our miscellaneous costs, and Medicare bill passes. And the great boom for the administration, the Senate has voted in favor of the proposed Medicare bill, which will establish a program to provide subsidized health care to Americans 65 and older, as well as those suffering from debilitating diseases that would otherwise send them into poverty. We're thankful to the Congress that has seen fit to help provide medical services to those that need it most, our elderly and our injured, President George Wall said in a short speech from the East Room of the White House before signing the bill. We can only judge ourselves as a civilized and decent nation by how we threat uh, the less fortunate, or treat the less fortunate, the sick and elderly. Despite the opposition from many doctors and private insurance companies saying that Medicare would be just the first step in a Marxist plot to destroy American culture and democracy, and others denouncing the act for not covering every citizen in a subsidized health care program. Medicare will soon be a reality in the U.S. No longer will advanced age Americans have to decide between their health and their finances. Here's a long, happy life, so we get basically emergency support is replaced with low-income protections, more political power, monthly population, stability, poverty, monthly uh, change, but it's going to cost more because we passed it. Become, we become more popular nationwide, more expenses, poverty will go down quicker, um, just like everything, just like Social Security. Bill will cost more, poverty will go down quicker, become more popular nationwide. It is what it is. So the thing about this, and this is the thing I was spending hours on, uh, now we're minus 0 0.08, fighting this. Basically, to do this, you have to do segregated security as well as restrict coverage because if you don't, as it says, Thurman, in both cases, <clears throat> will sabotage you. You will have like literally only half the support of the right wing of the southern portion if you d try to pass it without a support. And so basically you'll have like no, no support overall. Um, basically you won't be able to pass it without doing these two. Which will alienate eventually the center, which sucks. So really, you're kind of forced to restrict coverage. You really are. You just don't have enough support from everyone else besides your own voter base to get these passed. So... It is what it is. I didn't want to have to segregate this off this time, but it is what it is. And if you want to read this again, please go right ahead. Uh, now they're out of the way. Did I read this one already? Or maybe not. I'll read it again anyways. Maybe. Um. Yeah, I think I read this one earlier, so I'm going to read this again. Please go right ahead. So we'll do this one next. I was always went back to the blue-collar voter base. Big business does not like this kind of rhetoric. Oh, we'll appease big business later on. But yeah. Um, I really wanted a non-segregationist Wallace campaign, but it doesn't look like that's going to happen. Um... Segregation is actually unhappy, not bad. Of a party that balances the need of workers and businessmen, and they're happy with state's rights for now. So, at the cost of some MP, the center popularity and support for presidency, which is you know whatever. I like I said, I use cons commands basically for this, so it sucks. It really sucks. But you know when TNO three comes out, or you know Toolbox thirty three, or just the next major update at the time it's recording, we'll see what happens. Because we got some cons to go through as well. Also, uh, Africa, East Africa is already broken free, as well as Zambia. So. Not sure what we're still doing here. Oh, look at that. Worker directed, huh? Liberal democracy. Pretty socialist here. Yeah, member of our sphere, which is good. As long as they're a member of our sphere, that's what I really care about the most. Coca Cola, huh? Let's see. That's looking pretty good, too. And that's over here. We're pretty good. Political landscape. Uh, can't suppress oh, opposition parties. Neo Silver Act. Prison walls quickly leaked through the proposed bill. A copy of the New York Times left haphazardly on their desk, printed bold letters reading its title, Silver Shortage. Well, we're in this mess, Senator. How do you propose we get us out of it? Wallace asked, looking at the bespeckled figure sitting in front of him. The uh, proposed Silver Act will grant the President uh, the ability to suspend the convertibility of dollar to silver, Mr. President. Free floating dollar will let the Fed put more money into circulation, but. and put an end to the whole crisis, Bennett replied, passing a copy of the bill to one of his aides. Wallace nodded. How soon can you get this past the Senate? Day tomorrow, there are a few holdouts, but not enough to matter. Well, then, the President said, uh, offering the Senator a hand. It has been a pleasure working with you, Senator. 
Better take the hand. Mine as well, Mr. President, despite our differences. I'll be seeing the chairman later today in her recommendations. Uh, I'd focus on curtailing inflation, though. I'm sure many of our more liberal friends would push for more aggressive monetary policy, Bennett replied evenly. It wouldn't be my preference, but the choice is yours, Mr. President. I'll keep the chairman informed, Senator. Inflation would go down by 0.9. And we get an increase of 0.3, so we get an effective change of like 1%, 1.2%. That's actually really strong. Nice. So now we got to do federal aid. Uh, the conservatives will dislike this. But most cooperation between the center and the right wing give the president more power but lower autonomy of the states. Those who shall see the bounty yield, which is okay, not bad. It's pretty good. Um, this is good old economic populism. and Dixie tradition, the center will love it, but big business will hate this. We've already pissed off big business a lot, and we're going to piss them off even more. Lower the amount of claimants, make the budget a bit more manageable. They didn't need that money anyways. We'll also go past Congress on some budget challenges. But then, then our voter base will expect more states' rights. So it makes more sense. As much as I want to do this route, if we had a massive like center coalition for the NPP, they'd make more sense to do this, but it makes more sense to do states' own spending. As any self-respecting American conservative knows, local state governments always know what's best for the real needs other people are. The governments use, must be free to set their own policy and use their budgets in whatever way they deem most appropriate. Increase the state's autonomy, the president will not be able to influence state affairs as much. It is what it is. And win over Western Democrats, which doesn't matter. And we'll attempt to build, pass a bill into Congress, which should go pretty darn easily. Alright. Let's look at here. So, they're unhappy now. They're back to being unhappy, but they'll be happy enough soon. Also, I'm thinking, keeping an eye on this one. Balance of the workers and the businessmen. Here, 79 of, of the right wing. I, don't, I still don't know why it's called far right. You, you don't call yourself far right. But anyways. Um, 80, 84... 84 senators, so it's pretty popular. Happy 1969, everybody. Um, we'll talk with the Republicans. Nah. We don't want to talk to them. After that, no more handouts. Let's get rid of the idea that the federal government must, can replace the states in their duties. You're responsible for all your problems. Work on your own solution to fixing them instead of begging Washington for help. Defederalization will continue. The social swing will grow. The South will flock to Wallace. Be a big win for states' rights, but a loss for federal admin efficiency. It is what it is. More costs. Actually, what are we looking for costs? You know, the social policy costs for Social Security and Medicare, we still have a yearly surplus. I mean, yeah, I cut military austerity, but... We, we, it's, 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 are you sure that it really we passed it? It should cost more, but... Last voyage of the USS United States, if you're worried about that, please go ahead. But some comments include... Uh, someone says, I'm still hoping for the redemption arc. Well, we can't really be have a massive redemption arc here, but uh, if you want to do this too, please go ahead. We shall overcome. Uh, this one too. So, yeah, we shall overcome. Actually, I'm going to see the mm, Beach Boys, huh? I'm going to see them soon. At the time's recording, kick lines and tear gas. I've uh, read that like 6,000 times. If you want to read that one, please read it as well. And spend more money, because why not? An incredible sight. Questioning the dream. Oh, the poor man drives home from his. Oh, I think I read this one too. If you want to read, read this one, please read it as well. The system begins to crack. Something's changing in America. Which means the Communist Party is growing 5%. And we have 4% for national daddyism, too. I love it. Party getting better, too. I mean, what, can, what else can you ask for? A single Republican says yes. State financial independence. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful, my friends. A ray of hope. Nice. So after this, um, we're going to... Ooh. SFII frees up success in Congress. We're going to go through here and get through the American worker. And then we'll probably start doing stuff over here as well. <clears throat> D.C., the capital of America, and is referred to in some circles, the capital of the free world. The freedom obviously comes in the form of our representative democracy here in the United States. However, President Wallace and his administration have taken to a more economic interpretation of the nickname, as constant work has been put forward to free the American market from a federal intervention as much as possible. Today, however, uh, stands as a landmark for the President's successes, as the State uh, Finance Independence Act, or also SFIA, which intends to cut incredible amounts of federal infrastructural intervention, has come to pass in Congress. <laughs> as we're going to suppress the Democrats, too. All on side, the administration has collectively cried to joy as constant fighting back and forth between the legislative and executive branches have finally made some leeway in the success of the act. President Wallace himself commented that saying the Americans across the country will enjoy unprecedented economic freedom without the words of regulations, rules, and governance from D.C. any longer. Meanwhile, several Democrats and right-wing governors have offered the conjoined support for the President and the State Financial Independence Act, with many claiming that the Capitol held a stranglehold on the potential workings towards the American infrastructure for years. Nevertheless, large swaths of the population find outrage with the passing of the bill, and many protested the legislative branch itself claiming that it's becoming bullied by the President George C. Wallace. Our and progressives of both parties and blue-collar workers came together to oppose the passing of the bill, with the wrong Republican representative operating statement saying that President Wallace and his entire administration received nothing more than but the abandonment of the American people because he intimidates. He's a bully. Besides party divides, 
recommend economic analysis say that the drastic turn for the American economy will take time until its benefits and misgivings. Chain no more. Big wins for states' rights, but a loss of federal admin efficiency. Hey, 3%. 3%? We're 50.6% popularity. End of the subsidies. Oh, boy. Uh, Wallace's voter base will start having second thoughts about states' rights. Increase state of time, but it also hurt the poor states. If any of the states want to start giving handouts, they're free to do so. Just don't expect to suck up any more money from the federal government. Certainly, every state should have enough money to finance its needs. If they don't, then maybe they should stick about, uh, think about this weird little thing known as sustainability. Which is true. Ah. We got the political power for it. Sure, why not? Now they're happy with more states' rights. So, yeah, high unity, we could use more, too, probably. But... <coughs> Excuse me. Another comment was, I have an excellent idea for a TNO campaign. First, you start with Nixon, and you not only work with the civil rights movement, uh, then you will not work with the civil rights movement, elect RFK, but have him removed, and finally have Harrington for two terms. He says that, I know you've already played this route, but I want to see this in Toolbox Theory. That'd be cool. Yeah. I don't know. Just thinking, at this point, playing as America, it's very tedious to set up, because you have to go through everything there. Everything, um, that, like all the conflicts and whatnot. It takes a while to do, which sometimes I just don't have enough time to do it, so... But in the boardroom, god darn it, what are we doing about that? Wallace, he's been trying as hard as he gets invested in Alabama for sure. Are you crazy or we're going to tie ourselves up to the hip of Jim Crow? Subsidies, nothing but to laugh at. And then I hear there's boycotts planned for any company crazy to take him up. Take him. Uh, the chairman motioned to silence board members. Gentlemen, even if we, the subsidies from Wallace and his southern friends are attractive, we can't find anyone less politically toxic, right? Give him arms. Still unhappy with segregation stuff. So. Well, admin efficiency goes way down. Streamline bureaucracy. Uh, that's actually really good. Getting down here is going to suck, though. Oh, well. Good luck. Of course, it's 1969, which means next year is a midterm year. What's talking about that? Please go ahead. Do. Far out, man. Far out. Opera success. Good. And the American worker. Our choices and painful sacrifices had to be made, but at least all of it is paying off. We created a new legal environment, one in which healthy business can grow while the worker can enjoy the fruits of their labor. America is now a better and more prosperous society for anyone willing to put in the work necessary. Through honesty and work, and hard work, any American can find prosperity, depending upon the success and the nature of the welfare reforms. Their passage will have wider impact on American society. Grow more unified, which we're already maxed up, and poverty will begin to rapidly improve. Someone else asked, actually the same person asked the same, this question. What's going to change with Toolbox Theory 3? What's well, the next major update? That's a good question. I know Wales is getting removed. Black Power Revolution. Um, I really don't know. I've not been keeping up on my TNO at the time of recording, but the TNO updates and stuff, so I'm not entirely sure. Um, so, I kind of like to be surprised and then look read everything at one time so I know what's going on so that I'll forget everything as well. 12 billion. Are you sure this is costing us anything? Hold on, let's go to social policy, safety, acceptable regulations, uh, police, minority, equal rights, huh, outlawed, public education, healthcare is low, it's still low, it's still slowly improving though, or maybe not, oh, healthcare budget 75%, I guess we could get more hospital satisfaction as well, but still, still, advanced transports, Attack Kelly's, attack Kelly's, nice. Oh, what's going on here? Scar's heel. It was this. Oh, down here. <clears throat> yeah, if you would be wrong to say all's well for many of these young men left something back in the African jungle, something maybe they never find again. End of the subsidies. American worker. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Alright, so that's all 1970s stuff. Better already. We're getting close to the new decade. Implement protect people's tactics. Someone says, make the libs cry. Well, we're doing the best we can. Hey, they're more than satisfied with states' rights now. Uh, giving us support in the south and the center of the country at the cost of the center, popularity, and support for presidency. Not bad. New Free America. President Wallace let the TVs in his office run as he peered out of the window. News feeds reported. <clears throat> or news reports fed through the cycle every day on the president's actions to ensure the liberties of Americans out there. Now more than ever, Americans felt free to do as they please, maintain the business practices they wanted, without worry of interrupting federal government breaking them down, emboldened by the power of the states. For once, no one had to worry about their responsibilities towards other citizens and could live freely, happily, and patriotically. A sudden knock at the door interrupted the contemplative thoughts of the president, responding to the interruption with a sharp, come in. 
And besides up Wilson, the little aide that he always felt pitiful uh, humor for. <clears throat> A letter for your eyes only, Mr. President, Wilson said, handing the letter to the president before leaving the Oval Office. Ripping open the letter, it appeared to be another official message straight from the, some senator from Ohio. To the President of the United States, it's with fervent approval that we congratulate your efforts. President Walls, finally, the gross bureaucracy slowing the wheel of progress have been overturned, and the states have received the power they've been lacking for so long. <clears throat> it's not the government's role to care for the sick and injured, nor is the government's role to win over the poor with welfare checks or Social Security, or allow the blacks into schools if the rest of us don't want them. No, Mr. President, you shaved off those leeches and allowed the U.S. to march freely on even allowing the states to protect themselves as they would like, <clears throat> knowing that you have earned the favor on uh, the conversion of a strong coalition of Democrats in the United States Senate. President Walz <clears throat> set down the letter and turned to look through the windows once more, proud of the work he had achieved for the people of the United States. It's a good day to be American. It's a great day. I'm so divided what we're going to do here, and I do want to do Welcome to America as well, by Americans, uh, for those who pay. Um, they look better in northern states. Let's go ahead and do this one first. Made America by Americans, for those who pay, of course. Because I do want to do Welcome to America, get more uni unifying stuff here, but you know, this will be good too. I want to wait to do this stuff, because I don't want to isolate anybody else here, maybe. Because if we do this, an ad with a union, look better in the Steel Bell Midwest, which is not bad. Big Vince is going to hate stuff, whatever. Incentivize work. Um, lower the amount we're spending on unemployment subsidies. Court the center, which so the MPP looks better in the Northern States, which would be good too. We're already looking very good anyways. Atlanta Cotton helping Dixie out. Increase miscellaneous costs. Big business will hate us, whatever. So give you a job core. Hurrah, hurrah. The South will love us, our core constituencies. And I definitely want to get this one before we end this campaign, too. So for those who pay first. Uh, you know, read really by Americans, because you're supposed to go this way. From all across the South, that's over 3,000 good, hard-working Southerners with new jobs that offer good pay. 3,000 men, young and old, doing their part to expand the largest economy in the world by leaps and bounds. 3,000 families delighted to hear uh, that Pat will come home tonight with a spring in his step 10 years younger. And most importantly, dollars in his pockets for the first time in a long while. I've spoken to some of these fine folks on my way here. Nathan Sullivan, father too from Selma, who used to work in his dad's auto shop when he was young. George Green, an electrician who came all the way from Corpus Christi, thank God, uh, looking for a new start in the heart of Dixie. Tully Whitaker, wants a plumber fixing pipes and leaks down in Shreveport to feed a beautiful wife and three little hellions with all the shrimp gumbo they can eat. These three men and 3,000 more will be working in this factory in the coming months and years, churning out hundreds of thousands of cars a week. What more could you want? Oh, look at that. Stability is gone. Uh, let's see. It's a conservative here, huh? Fellow vacancy. So conservative died in doing that. Um, so that, I guess they're done with that stuff there. Political landscape. So if conservative goes... It was six conservatives. If we get another liberal, we won't hurt... Because if we elect another conservative, that's going to hurt our authoritarian democracy. We don't want that. Beautiful. Hey, minus 0.12. Not bad. Awesome. Someone says, go hard on the segregation stuff. I want to see what happens when well, when Wallace doesn't get impeached. Which, technically, it was the last campaign I did as Wallace, so I think they already have done that one. And maybe I'll do it again someday. If I do, do another Bennett run, I've not done one in Toolbox Theory, I think, yet. So, more satisfied? Good. You can do more segregation stuff. I'm trying to limit how much segregation we're doing, as you can tell. Yeah, go do it anyways. Bye, Americans. For those who pay, which will be then be packed into tight, uh, mighty freight trains and water barges headed for America's largest ports, New Orleans, New York, New Jersey, ready to be hauled across the pond and the rest of the world. God willing, every street corner from Montgomery to Tokyo will be thrown in with the powerful engines of American Dodges, American Fords, Chevrolets, and Chryslers, all made in American factories such as this by American men such as you and them. Imagine a day where the citizens of Rome and Berlin and all the capitals of the world's towns will be treated to the sight of a morning parade. Not one with drab gray tanks or a dour face, goose stepping soldiers, but with a car straight from the free world, driven by Germans, by Italians, and Japanese, Europeans, and Asians, and African. Roar and freedom with every belch of exhaust smoke. Now, that would that be a sight to see. If you want to be at the death of JF, uh, uh, Joseph Kennedy, not JFK, his dynasty lives on, please go right ahead. Well, there's a little bit of authoritarian democracy, you can get more of this too, but whatever. It is what it is. I wish we could, like, more napalm? Oh, yes, please. Um, increase, like, our own support that way, but whatever. Why not? We'll go with the liberal option this time. Look at that. Oh, Congolese Republic, all these guys. So, are you guys, like, sphere? You're not with us. You're not our faction, but you are observers, at least? They are. Well, I guess they're technically our inner sphere, which is good. 
or more balanced court if you want to read about that, that's great. So we actually, actually, that's actually really good. We balance it out, so we got 3% more, more political power, more, slightly more stability, and less liberal democracy. Because who wants a liberal democracy? Now we're at 53%. Now that is nice for those who pay, of course. And then welcome to America. Uh, we've done it. The role was long, hard, and whining with all dog-headed lefty, lefties and duplicitous friends hounding us from every godforsaken corner, but we've done it. From every corner of the world, businessmen of every race and nation, every faith and creed, fly on the best planes they can charter to Washington, D.C. Day after day, they stream to the Oval Office, dignitaries, industrialists, magnates, princes, oil, barons, and droves bigger than the last, with the best suits they can order and the shiniest smiles they can muster, suitcases full of proposals and, and treaties, and promises to Uncle Sam, and with a few words, a few jokes, and a few handshakes, billions of cold, hard dollars enter the treasury in a single meeting. In a matter of weeks, these dollars will travel all over the country, sprouting up farms, roads, and factories wherever they are needed, spreading America's wealth to the people wherever they go. They're always long, hard, and whining, but through diligence and hard work, America's once again a bastion of freedom, democracy, and business. The girls a little more unified, which is great. International stakes. And then eventually we'll get more, uh... Yeah, let's see about segregation. Yeah, I don't know. Alright, so over here... We will have to recruit for... The next election as well. Outreach programs. More advisors is fine. Until the next crisis, but that's not gonna happen for a while. 1.3%. We're taking, we're taking a while to lower the debt, but should be okay. And actually, what are the economic expectations that the voters have right now? Oh, we can also strengthen the pro market sentiment, but this point, there's no point in even doing that. I just use the CIA to suppress our the political opponents, that's all. You know, like any good politician would do. Oh, less than a billion, nice. Nice, good stuff. More fuel, we don't need it, but yeah. For those who pay. Welcome to America, a Pacific trade zone. The Greater East Asia co prospered as fierce Tokyo's collection of populous and conquered nations. Captain Lion through the brutality, cruelty, and unrelenting barbarity of the Japanese military. For 20 years, the spheres kept the riches of the Orient from flowing to American shores, locking off our merchants and traders from Asian silk, Filipino sugar, and East Indies rubber. Yeah, within this tragedy, there lies opportunity. When all of Asia feels beneath Tokyo's iron heel, across the Pacific's vast expanse, India stands as a bulwark of democracy and freedom against the spheres that advance. A market of hundreds of millions untapped by American in enterprise. The Secretary of Fulbright and the State Department see India as America's best chance to aid the force of liberty and democracy, and tie us to our Pacific allies through the bonds of trade and commerce. Extremal ratio. This is BS, man. Before the election, all our president could talk about was the segregation. Now what? Nothing. It's been nearly 10 minutes of venting in a quiet bus stop in Charleston. Maxwell Thomas never wanted to talk about politics with strangers, but he felt the man sitting next to him at the bench, a self-admitted fellow NPP voter, would understand his frustration. I hear you, buddy. Wallace is always just another politician, and you know how politicians are. I mean, you're not wrong, all right? He's done a lot of good protecting the freedoms of state governments and all, but that civil rights bill is a pile of crap. I'm supposed to fix that mess. I don't know. I don't want my little girl going to school with a bunch of thugs. That's why I put walls. To think he stabs in the back. I mean, the so-called segregationists can't protect our sacred institutions, and who will? Yeah, I can't trust him. You know, though, I did find something interesting not too long ago. You may want to have this. Maxwell's acquaintance shifted his shifted in his seat, reaching into his coat pocket to retrieve a small flower. Really? Let me see that. Maxwell grabbed the flower from the friend's hand, unfolding to reveal an advertisement for some kind of political rally. American National Vanguard. I think I've heard of these guys. Aren't they bad news? I thought that too until I actually heard what they had to say. Besides, Mac Wallace failed us. Who else do we really have to turn to? Uh, Maxwell's attention became drawn to his bus, which was quickly approaching. Folding the flower and placing it in his pocket, he stood and looked at the man. Well, looks like my rights here. I'll uh, keep in mind what you said. Heck, it might be worth looking into. Extreme problems require extreme solutions, and Arkansas governor resegregates the state. A surprise announcement this morning. <clears throat> the governor of Arkansas announced that he would be reinstating segregation in the state. Orville Falbus. Panish in support of segregation, President Wallace declared that with Wallace's blessing, he would, he would allow local businesses to restore separate white and black facilities, and be ordered his formally to segregate schools to remove all non-white students immediately. His declaration was met with cheers by a crowd waving pro-segregation and uh, battle flag banners. <clears throat> It's come to us something to surprise the President Wallace, as he gave no such direct blessing for the governor to restore segregation so soon. Not, any, not every barrier to segregation's restoration has been removed. With Brown v. Board still technically in place, the matter of segregating the schools in particular could prove extremely legally problematic. Naturally, the governor's decree has sparked protests by civil rights activists across Arkansas and fierce outcry from black parents whose children have suddenly found themselves stripped out of school. Segregation is a delicate matter in this current age of America, and as his careless act may cause many issues indeed. He's jumped the gun. This could cause problems by inter international stakes. The American economy is a system of endless prosperity and potential, insofar as President Wallace is concerned. <clears throat> With the American people behind him, he knew that his work had been that of a guarantee for the people of the United States to feel the full effect of his work to grow the economy. But, much to the chagrin of the President, Treasury Secretary Wilbur Mills had to interrupt, 
had asked to enter off the end of the day for the president with talks of domestic product. You see, Mr. President, there's just some inherent concerns regarding the possibilities of such agreements. The may occur the conference, sir. Already Mills was uh, using too many words for the hour it was, uh, was at night. Look, Wilbur, as far as I'm concerned, the population of the United States has done an excellent job within the frame of my presidency in producing exceptional results in regard to the strength of the economy, sure. The OFN <clears throat> may come together to agree on just a few limitations regarding the potential of trade, but what does it matter, Wallace Park? Well, Mr. President, the economic interests of the nations that have reserved a potential seat of the conference all have portrayed a common element, the bad being a direct escalation on the importation of uh, goods from the markets. That being said, it's a matter of concern both economically and politically, Mills said. Wallace took a moment to pause upon hearing an advisor. What do you mean politically, Mills? Wallace said, slowly approaching his advisor. Well, sir, Mills said. The right branch of the MPP is forever about the maintenance of a free and competitive domestic market for the uh, United States. Furthermore, with a direct sense of pride in emanating from the right, <clears throat> they may become perturbed if they happen to notice influx of or foreign goods into the market, especially many of the big businesses, uh, of big businesses, who attempt to fight any entrance of non-American, non-profitable goods in the market. As much as Wilbur infuriated the president by delaying a potential good night arrest, President Walsh had to admit that his Treasury Secretary made some valid points in regards to the political and economic status of the country. That being said, telling big business to shove it, they'll have treaties to obey. We'll give him enough just to make him happy. Bounce it out. Will you tip the scales to the treaty, will you? Um, no honesty. Let's see. So we're probably going to piss off big business, like I said earlier. Still doing some campaigns. Um, we can close out of this one for now, too. They don't even need more political power, really. So they close out that one as well. And close out that one. And it's voter base. So they're unhappy. We're ba balancing the words, the needs of the workers and big business. So we're doing Pacific Trade Zone currently. Um, and we're going to be pissing off the... Ooh, let's slide them on growth. Uh, big business anyways. Which is not good. And we'll do it t at least once in total. On the left side here, the Atlantic Cotton. Big business will hate this. Hmm. We have treaties to obey. I don't want to lose too much support, but balance it out, maybe. Let's balance it out, because I don't want to piss them off too much. Let's do that. Engage OCN in, uh, interests? Why not? For me to you, huh? News from George Wallace. <clears throat> the Empire of Japan's rampage across the Pacific before, during, and after the Second World War left countless of nations bruised, bloody, and broken. With no one left to turn, these nations were first in having to succumb to the car uh, coercion wrought by the Japanese. Now, after years of this suffering, countries like Australia and New Zealand can finally find the strength to turn towards a larger power to help them fight against Japanese influence, the United States. The administration will send multiple nations to these countries in an effort to offer subsidization in their steps forward, whilst encouraging new and empowering trade deals between the U.S. and the governments. <clears throat> As far as our work is produced, these countries appear to be the most sympathetic to our cause after their suffering, and it's the government's greatest interest in secure allies in the face of the dangerous empire of the East. And look at that debt. No debt. Awesome. Happy 1970, 1970 as well, everybody. Even though we pretty much already have everything here, for the most part. Uh, better planes? Yeah, why not? Black students fought governor. Amidst the resegregation of Arkansas, schools one institution has chosen to buck the trend. It seems to be a school that caused Governor Fowles a great deal of consternation once before. Uh, Little Rock uh, Central High School. In those 50s, that was a site of much uh, fur, or furor when, after the implementation of Brown v. Board, <clears throat> uh, Falbus first attempted to resist the desegregation of Arkansas by physically blocking black students from entering the building before he was removed under direct orders from President Eisenhower. Now, it's a thorn in his side once again. After a bitter argument between staff, black students, and parents, and with some encouragement from sympathetic teachers, the African-American kids were allowed to re-enter the school in direct defiance of the governor's order. They declared that they have a right to be there, no matter what some no-good, ignorant racist pig might think, as one student put it. Governor Fowles reportedly maintaining medically concerning levels of fury, and is already making plans to send the police and even the National Guard to the school to forcibly remove the students. Such a large and, some would say, disproportionate response is certain to cause an uproar. This could get out of hand very quickly. Get Fowles on the phone, and we gotta talk. Transport planes? Advanced transport, at least. Nice. Do we have anti-air? No. One angry man. In a lengthy phone call, President Wallace rained bitter fury upon Governor Falvis, calling his actions childishly rash and potentially damaging to the cause of segregation all across America. Falvis apologized for jumping the gun, but instead said that he had no intentions of backing down, pointing that he did, he did not have the right to send in the National Guard for Wallace's reforms, a fact which Wallace accepted bitterly. I do eventually discuss how to prevent the situation from spiraling out of control. 
Bobbles insisted that he had the experience and expertise to handle the matter on his own initiative. Which Falls, Walls sarcastically remarked he had worked out just amazingly so far. Walls demanded that Bobbles allow him to put the National Guard under federal control for the operation so as to better manage things and prevent any further escalation. He also suggested reinforcing the ranks with the reserves of the U.S. Airborne Forces, believing that their presence could deter the protesters and convince them to back down quickly. Now it's Bobbles' turn to be angry, questioning why a man so determined to de-escalate the situation would consider sending in military forces. They argued for another half hour or so, each sticking to their proposed solution. Eventually, a decision was made. Leave this guard, federalize it, bring in the airborne. Leave the airborne. Federalize it. I kind of want to federalize it. But leave the airborne. Um, this is going to look good for us regardless, so. Uh. Hmm. Bring in the airborne. Stage right, right? Hmm. Federalize it, bring in the airborne. Hmm, that's going to escalate things even more. You know what? Leave it under state control. We may spell impeachment. They're unhappy, more than satisfied, balanced. And then gauge Central American interests. The nations of the world endure long pains of suffering with the crushing weight of Japan's influence in this. The country of Central America have grown to an economically difficult scenario, leaving them clawing to get any form of support possible. Larger nations such as Mexico continue to dodge away from their neutrality, however. Smaller nations such as Nicaragua, Guatemala, and Honduras are able to be swayed in the interest of the financial opportunity in the desperate scenarios, and even resorted to accepting Japanese diplomatic action to aid themselves. No more. We won't allow neutral nations of the world to fold more towards Japan's or Japanese bullying. Thus, we can offer all we can to make sure the close countries of Central America will be warmed to their idea of a Pacific trading zone, while also showing an act of good faith that the American people of the administration's willingness to impede Japan's domination. Besides, Americans love tropical fruit, right? And polls are updated. Nice. As they should be. So unhappy with our direction. We'll have to do at least one other thing in segregation here. Segregate the curricula. It's going to alienate these guys. Stand up Central High. Looks a lot worse than Northern States. I don't want to do that during an election year, though. We could do the end of the Civil Rights Act, too, but we could do that like, at the very last. I'll probably do funding for schools. When well, the students at Little Rock Central High arrived at the school that morning, they found the National Guard already waiting for them. The guard waved through the, the Y students while turning away the blacks, and an outrage quickly erupted. The students' parents joined their voices to their children's anger, and as word spread throughout the town, countless men and women showed up to add to the din. Within a few hours, a mass protest had gathered the National Guard now sandwiched between them and the school. In scenes reminiscent of the most heated days of the Civil Rights Movement, the crowd demanded equality and justice, yelling chants and waving banners of the armed guards who could do not but hold formation in front of the entrances to the school. As the clock struck 12, the heat of the Arkansas afternoon brought the crowd to a fever pitch. A small group of counter protests had arrived to hurl abuse at the demonstrators, which only added to the attention. Facing a cacophony of fury and boxed in from all sides, the National Guard slowly began to lose their patience. Amidst chaos, the little rock had become a tinderbox. All that it would take to ignite the situation was a single spark. Please don't do anything stupid. But you never know. Tragedy to Central High. Oh, God. The shots were around America. After, after altercations between student protesters and the National Guard became increasingly tense, one prominent activist marched to the forefront of the action. Yelling, rallying, cries in the faces of assembled troops, the activists and their surrounding followers became more and more impetuous. As their demands for entry became more forceful, one of the guardsmen became increasingly twitchy as he, the leader approached him. As she cried out for equality, he snapped. He would later claim to have felt threatened by her presence. Others would have asked how an armed and armored white man could possibly feel threatened by a young black student who just wanted to learn. The crowd froze as a shot rang out, the guardsman his gun in his hand. The act of his blood and dying fall to the ground and then chaos. Some ran in terror, others charged forwards in fury. Now in complete panic, the other guards released more shots into the crowd in a desperate attempt to restore control. Two more young protesters would be dead by the end of the day. One brick thrown by an outraged student would send one of the guards into a coma from which he would never wake again. As the chaos unfolded across Central High, just as soon as it would across all Little Rock and throughout America, First, journals arrived on the scene. The images they would capture of blood and dust and both bodies of students and terrified children watched from the school windows would soon be broadcast across the nation. America would bear witness to what would become known as the tragedy of Central High, and the wrath of those scenes would unleash a wash across all land, from the lowest streets to the highest seats of the office. Oh, goodness. Oh, goodness. That's my response. What do you want me to do? A Republican in the East Coast. There's a lot of Republicans in the East Coast. Why are there so many Republicans in the East Coast? The shadow of tragedy. I guess it's, uh, oh god, MPP support is fully high. It's fully secure, wow. Uh, Shadow, Shadow of the Tragedy. Wait, why are we here? We already have our land auction. Oh, it's right here. That's why. The fingers are being pointed at both high and low. Governor Fawis has naturally taken a lot of the blame and is currently fiercely resisting demands to resign. But the media, for the most part, is pointing their daggers at President Walls. 
The other facts of segregation revealed. And Wallace oversees massacres of children are just some of the headlines being rolled around by every newspaper in the country. The president's segregation policies have been directly blamed for encouraging the catastrophe. Riots, the likes of which have not been seen since the depths of the civil rights have, days, have broken out across the South and North Pole. The media even called particular attention to President Wallace, allowing Governor Falbus free use of the National Guard. By allowing us to attack Doug Falbus and use his National Guard forces against peaceful demonstrators, Wallace's lack of responsibility only allowed the worst proponents of segregation the ability to wreak mayhem against their political opponents. The burning heat of unrest across the country is reflected in every branch of the government. For the first time in a very long time, the Republicans, the Democrats, and the center all united together. United in outrage that the president carelessly allowing military force against American citizens to further segregationist ambitions. As the right attempts to mount whatever defense it can, calls to bring up from both sides of the aisle for a formal inquiry to, be, uh, to begin against President Wallace, and for multiple sources of one word no one ever, no president ever wants to hear our murder on an hourly basis, impeachment. For what? I mean, it's not his fault. It's terrible. It's the end of my presidency. I'm sorry, but like, look, he, he's big about states' rights. And what do you want him to do? Use federal force? I guess. Get to get your way? I mean, yeah, shooting the person probably wasn't the smart, smartest idea to do, but, like, Jesus. It's okay to use federal control, even if it's something I don't like, right? Our darkest out. Federal troops deployed a Little Rock to enforce the Wallace administration's legislation on school segregation. Open fire this morning of protesters marching to Little Rock Central High to protest the recent explosion of all African-American students. The shooting occurred. Uh, as a protest column were blocked from approaching the school by counter protesters and supported the decision. The federal troops attempted to separate the two groups. Local hospitals reported that 14 African American protesters were killed and another 36 were injured, with no reports of hospitalizations by the predominantly white counter protesters. Pentagon officials declined to comment on today's events, only stating that soldiers involved exercised appropriate restraint in response to an increasingly violent situation. The National Association for the Advancement of Colored People has condemned the actions of federal troops, claiming that the shootings were the latest display of barbarity by the government that, with a wink and a nudge, violently imposes unjust segregation in the name of justice and order. While Little Rock has only reported sporadic violence after local authorities declared a curfew with immediate effect, the impact of the incident has spread rapidly as protests and looting have been reported in New York, Detroit, Boston, Birmingham, Chicago, and Baltimore, with protest leaders calling for an immediate with investigation and the conduct and orders given to federal troops involved in the shooting. Sen senior RD leaders in Washington and members of the uh, Senate caucus have issued a statement that they will demand an immediate explanation from the Pentagon and the White House in the coming days. The coming days will be hard. If senators will decide the president's fate, so be it. Engage in Indian interests. Across the Pacific, within the foreign lands crawling across uh, Asian lands, lots of powerful forces contend against the Japanese Empire's coercion, India. The Indian people of the subcontinent have managed to survive against the prowling of the imperial predators for centuries, and now they're forced to protect themselves against the empire's growing sphere of influence. In this, they have strived to protect their interests and individual standoff, but we know better. We know that the fight against the Japanese does not require a single fiery will from change, but a group's collective fear in destroying the growth force in the world, not from the theories and estimates from American blood. Now, although we may seem foreign or even alien towards the Indian government, we must extend our hand through ambassadors to discuss the joining of the Pacific trade zone. The fight against the Japanese Empire not as not one on one, but as brothers in arms. And Arkansas demands investigation. Um, uh, probably New England, maybe. In response to the protesters gathered daily outside the state capitol, with the state police increasingly overwhelmed by controlling nighttime riots, the governor of Arkansas announced the state government will conduct its own investigation into the conduct of federal trips during the Little Rock shootings. In his remarks, the governor openly questioned the Wallace administration's decision to deploy federal troops in the state, blaming unclear orders and a lack of familiarity with local practice for disaster shootings. Wallace's aides shared concerned glances with each other as the president's face twisted into a scalp. The chief of staff that shut the TV off forced the president to return his attention to his immediate surroundings. Mr. President, you know how bad this looks. We had to get ahead of this problem by opening a federal investigation before Congress and Arkansas saw drawing unwarranted conclusions. Wallace noted slowly the optics of American soldiers shooting other Americans in the streets were too horrendous to be ignored, and he knew that the vultures were circling low. Well. All that mattered was now damage control, and getting the federal government on to take charge of the investigation before the Arkansas state government could start collecting evidence sent from Wallace's phone call to the governor before this entire mess started. Lock it all down. Welcome to the outback. Uh, president Wallace has been enjoying this day. As the switch to foreign policy, it's been an enjoyable experience with the new rush of creativity to his office, which I'm sure he enjoyed. However, the man he needed in most all of this, G. A. William Fulbright, happened to join him just as he was thinking of, of it all. So we've received a statement from Holt. Wallace took a hold of the sheet as I shot down Reed. To George C. Wallace, President of the United States, the Commonwealth of Australia has taken dutiful notice towards the production of the United States Depar Department of State in regards to the Organization of Free Nations potential conference within the city of Perth, having taken notice of the potential security of protectionist trade policy towards the, towards the members' economies, especially in regards to the attacks on our economies by the Empire of Japan, along with our absolute steadfastness and loyalty to the Organization of Free Nations. We will accept the whole of the conference and will be directing all necessary resources towards the meeting. For safe shield in the Pacific and the insecurity of a most honored alliance between the U.S. and the Commonwealth of Australia, Prime Minister Harold Holt. 
uh, President Wallace finished his reading of the physically sheet, simple sheet, which had been carried to his desk. Yet, the President was filled with balanced pride for himself and his administration. We've got it, the President said, smiling towards the uh, Secretary of State, who responded with a firm handshake. From Perth onwards, the bloodhounds. A day after the government announced that the Pentagon would be taking charge of investigating the conduct of troops in the Little Rock shooting, Wallace found himself waiting impatiently for his chief of staff to return from a meeting on Capitol Hill. It's clearly being delayed by the angry congressional leaders, most likely being raked over for the coals for Little Rock. But so long after the NPP didn't break ranks, they'd just be fine, once the military and the Justice Department had secured all evidence in Arkansas. His chief of staff rushed into the Oval Office, short of breath, clearly flustered, he could barely manage to stammer. Congress has his transcripts of all your calls with the governor. He sold us out before people could secure the evidence. Wallace real and Congress? They were behind the governor's door and that he wasn't adequately consulted or informed about the federal troops' mission before the shootings. Wallace offered the chief of staff some water, but he refused, continuing on. The Senate is going to agree to an inquiry in the House of Representatives. The investigation is not in our hands anymore, and we're going to be a given, called to give testimony at some point. Wallace swore the dogs in Congress had smelled blood, and this was going to make everything more complicated. Perhaps it's time to take the argument directly to the people. People need to hear our side of the story. Maybe we can set up a Patsy. Let me do that one. You know what, just in case. Let's save. Oh, we have some extra production units. Nice. That's what they want. They want to impeach us for bringing the national debt to literally nothing. For um, expanding the budget or the GDP of the nation to over $430 billion. For increasing trade between the OFN nations. Saving Africa. How can you say I'm racist? Or, I mean, we're racist. We saved Africa from the Nazis. Except Patsy. You know what? Calm down. They won't hear anything. They won't find anything. Probably, right? Right? Vacuum. Politics as of nature absorbs a pores of vacuum. In the absence of any statement from the White House concerning the Little Rock shootings or the developments in the House afterwards, the media is abuzz with half-checked truths, conspiracy theories, and rumors about the role our administration played in the chain of events. The most popular stories circulating through the news cycle alleges that even if we didn't order the troops to shoot in Little Rock, the general bend of our civil rights policies was, we would suggest that we weren't terribly bothered by the shootings that resulted, and that our silence confirms the narrative. However, much of uh, 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 the administration agrees with the statement that is besides the point. Someone else was right in the story, and the refusal of President Wallace to get involved with even proposing a counter narrative is leaving the legislators and the NPP scrambling to put together a response. Which is a uh, slipshod at best and incoherent at worst. Naturally, the MPP Congressional Caucus is furious. Things would be bad enough if it was just the media buying a bang for blood and the MPP demanding action, but the nation as a whole remains roiled with anger and recrimination. Civil rights marches are being organized on an almost daily basis, and curfews are increasingly in place across the South to tensions, to tensions between the African Americans and white communities from exploding. All on our watch. Hey, we'll see what happens. Soon testify. Live from the steps of the Capitol in D.C., uh, and most recent investigations of Little Rock Central High School, the House has decided to formally set up a trial to investigate President Wallace's actions during the ordeal, in an effort to root out any wrongdoings of the President's behalf, which would lead to a trial of impeachment for President Wallace. The reports indicate that the first set of witnesses have been called for by the House of Representatives. Trial. These witnesses are being the African American students involved in the protest to testify against the Wallace administration. With well, the House Chamber, the Speaker of the House had officially begun appointing managers. <clears throat> near uh, the case to begin hearing evidence presented by the student presence at the massacre at Little Rock. There, they make an already emotional, heart-breaking story abundantly clear for the American people. We're finally making it to the high school's front door, said Percy Jameson, one of the witnesses in the middle of the bloodshed, when we were met by protesters who fought against the movement. They now want us to walk into that school, shouting things like, get the blacks back out of the fields. Eventually, the shouting escalated into fighting. As we marched, and while we marched, several of my fellow students were punched, kicked, and hit over the head with signs, sometimes even bricks. And that's when Percy takes a minute here, his voice cracking and choking before saying it. That's when the troops came. They came and beat everyone back. Some of them looked confused and scared like us, but some of them looked like they hated us. When the ones hurting us continued to push forward, they opened fire. Percy's calm for several minutes after breaking down in tears. Um, the news teams are spread wide and far as the situation within the capital continued to develop. More students turned protesters, uh, turned victims, offered their side of the story. And the con continuously developing situation, only time will tell what the outcome will be for President Walls after all this. Kid never said, I did it. I never did it. You got nothing to pin on me. The guardsmen testify. The investigation of the mass shooting in Little Rock just a few days ago continues within the House today. As representatives have decided to call forth the next set of witnesses to offer testimony. The National Guardsmen involved in the massacre at the high school. Reports indicate that this involves guardsmen who actively opened fire into the crowd, as well as those who never partook in the shooting, as well as the senior officers who were involved in the response to the escalation of events that day. Officials of the House Judiciary Committee began receiving testimony from several of the guardsmen of judge official involvement in the enforcement of the order to open fire on the crowd protesters. A second platoon of the 216th Military Police Company within the state of Arkansas have been ordered to enforce federal laws in regard to the segregation of education or centers in both Arkansas and the southern United States. First Lieutenant Victor T Thornton, the commanding officer of the unit stationed at Little Rock High Central High School, he stated. The events that followed afterward 
applied uh, attempt at a controlling situation which fell into disorder. Many representatives were caught gasping and whispering following what sounded like the commanding officer's approval of the actions at Little Rock. Another member of the union, Corporal Douglas N. McConnell, delivered a noticeably different testimony, saying, I was standing between a few other guys in the union. I was scared to death, same as the protesters out there. Punches were being thrown, people were gnashing their teeth, screaming, I, sw I swore I broke almost not my eye, he says. Without getting too bad too fast, enlisted personnel and officers were yelling just the same, until everyone eventually yelled, fire, and all it went, he said, tears welling in his eyes, and was crackling. It went all to heck. Everyone started firing, I was so scared that I couldn't even feel my finger against the trigger. And I found out after that, that I didn't even fire around. The guardsman says, tears rolling down his face. <clears throat> Washington is in a state of fear and panic at the moment. However, no matter what, the government has promised that these those responsible will answer for their actions at Little Rock Central High School and make sure every victim is compensated for their loss. Still didn't hear my name in there, though. Still didn't hear it. At birth conference. The Australians have kindly agreed to host our economic conference for the Pacific nations of the OFN and the representatives from the United States, Canada, Australia, and New Zealand are scheduled to meet in a few days in Perth to discuss the most ambitious attempt at trade liberalization in modern history. But there's a great deal at stake beyond just the bread and butter of tariff schedules, industrial policies, celebrities, non-tariff barriers, labor protections and harmonizations, business regulations, common working standards, all of these are the trusty tools of the trade and negotiator. And with their deft application, we can one day help to expand our trade pact to transform a means of survival into a means to strangle the Japanese Empire and its dominions. The test, staff testified. <clears throat> After the emotional hearing from those struck in the middle of the bloodshed of the Little Rock a few days ago, followed by the shocking and eye-opening testimony given the members of the National Guard involved in the shooting itself, the House of Representatives has decided to call upon its third and final set of witnesses to offer testimony as to what happened that fateful day. Today, the staff of the Wallace administration and the staff of the state government of Arkansas will testify and provide any possible connections from the two governments into the involvement of the deaths of those 14 students. The first staff member to call it up to stand by the House Judiciary Committee is calling forth is calling for the Secretary of the Public Safety from the Government of Arkansas to offer insight on the Arkansas, Devolve, Arkansas government involvement. <clears throat> the Department of Public Safety recognizes the affairs which led to the shootings which occurred at Cent Little Rock Central High School and feels extreme regret in our actions that day, the Secretary said. The escalation from peaceful protest to outright massacre did not happen intentionally in any form within the state government of Arkansas. We simply cannot prepare for something so fast and so horrible to occur with such a short time frame. After several more members of the state government were heard, the House moved on to the big names in the ring. Federal staff members from the Wallace administration. The United States and the Wallace administration feel strongly in regards to the status of segregation and of the education system. In the actions of the protesting students that day, one figure within the Wallace administration said, whose name has been asked to be removed for his protection. <clears throat> but just because we disagree with allowing these students in does not mean that we authorize maskers to prevent their entrance. One representative stated that they were shocked and said that they were left feeling gross about the staff member of the Wallace administration's statements defending segregation during the aftermath of a butchery which happened thanks to that stance. <clears throat> While well, the House normally ending its call for witness testimony, the representatives have officially begun the process of deciding whether to forward the collection of evidence towards the Senate as articles of impeachment for President Wallace. Someone give me that little dude's name. Indian Jewel. While briefings were hardly a source of mirth for any president, the updates on the Perth Block were a rare source of good news for President Wallace, Australia, New Zealand, and Central America. Had joined the block with the discussions go ongoing over the next round of tariff cuts and import quotas moving forward. Even though the details were being fleshed out by the countless diplomats and lobbyists, Wallace was comfortable basking in the glow of his foreign policy success. And today, the State Department had another interesting proposal. Wallace sent through, through, through the papers, scarcely hiding his growling excitement. The numbers were breathtaking. Millions of consumers in a country that was still trying to find its footing on the global economic ladder, geographically positioned to block this fierce expansion further westwards. India, brief would be a prize indeed. The Secretary of State cleared so it's not a done deal. The Indians may have divergent in political or economic interests from us, and convincing them to join will be an order of magnitude more difficult than what we've done to date. Otherwise, we'll end up with our eggs in our faces if they turn us down. Those words echoed in Wallace's mind. India was a juicy prize, but how much was willing, Wallace was willing to give for it? And it's still the matter of the existing Perth Block members, who wouldn't be pleased if the Indians were given a sweetheart deal. Consulting, Indian market, Indian market, huh? Yeah, let's see what they want. They join the Perth block. Central America does. Uh, I just read this one too. How many more days do we have this? Thirty. Oh my gosh, thirty-two days. Holy crap! Central America join uh, joins the Perth block. The White House the rose gardens filled with dignitaries playing house to the assembly assembled heads of state of the Central American nations invited to the Perth block. Most had little say in the matter, of course, or were just happy to play their part in deepening America's pernicious. Uh, embrace, wholly dependent on American demand for agricultural exports and capital imports. Many Central American leaders had long ago accepted American political and military advisors in their politics as necessary for the development of the nations, and their, of course, their offshore options and fortunes, too. Most had, for not for nothing, the word Central American nations derided as banana republics. Guatemalan President Miguel Yidorgaris went as barely reflected. What was this pact truly? An oath of neo feudalism, pledging the crop to the landlord in his Washington manner while growing ever more dependent on American capital and machinery for the foreign plantations. 
For instance, it argued for years that true national development could only come with the self-improvement of industry and culture, which necessitated telling the Yang Kui that they would not receive the teeth of bananas today for the promise of local industry tomorrow. But it was all for naught, and had been dragged to Washington under threat of intervention by his colleagues, and now he stood behind the American president, a pain, smile, masking his shattered dreams. That we accept for what they must. Now they are extremely unhappy with us. Looks a lot worse than those states. We're not. I refuse to do that. They can be extremely unhappy for now. House decides to move forward with articles of impeachment, arousing debate for the American political sphere. The House has officially decided to uh, their, decided their official verdict in regards to the investigation and collected evidence in the happenings behind Little Rock Central High School massacre. As many within the media have decided to dub the shooting, the Senate Speaker of the House has decided to formally overturn the investigation to the Senate to begin a trial of George C. Wallace in regards to his involvement within the killings of 14 African American students and the injuring of 36 more. The word impeachment rings out in a familiar tune for the people of the United States at this point. Nevertheless, everyone has grown to stand firm in the beliefs regarding the massacre. Those darn students were told to back down, and guess what? They didn't. Said a protester in support of Wallace, alongside several men and women adorning the shirt saying Wallace will win. It's not right to blame the president for the shooting if those troops with an itchy trigger finger out of the ones that killed him. And those students shouldn't have been there in the first place. However, others have different opinions in regards to the trial of impeachment for the president, as many who supported the protesters have gathered in Washington to condemn the president. What Wallace did was an absolute disgrace for the United States. Whether he fired the first shots in the crowd or did not, he could have avoided this if he just let those children in. A man screams, waving around a banner with the words, Racists remain responsible. Overall, I think there's a huge part missing for everyone supporting Walls after what happened at Little Rock. Those were school kids, children, looking to walk in and get taught science and mathematics and English for Christ's sakes. As the Senate prepares to formally investigate President George C. Wallace and his administration for their possible actions, or for possible lack thereof, the nation continues to stand divided as it drowns out in the blood of 50 victims. Darn criminals in the house. Those vicious vandals. <clears throat> Once again, in a presidency seemingly full of televised conflict, President Wallace's eyes were glued to the TV as a standoff grew more tense by the moment. Beside him, Burr was on the phone coordinating a response to the Army National Guard as well as piecing together coordinated movements by local and state law enforcement. Blasted all over te television stations, a country watches as rifles were loaded, Americans stood against American. Near the border, Texas and Arkansas, Texan Army National Guard base stood strong, however, arriving from nearby suburbs. A group of hardline segregations and racial groups, calling themselves the Vandals, rallied near the gates of the Armory, challenging the federal government due to their softening of policy regarding segregation and the soft approach to black America as a whole. What? In response, a brigadier general commanding over the base deployed a military police platoon to meet the Vandals at the gates. Now, the two groups stand in the middle of one of the tensest showdowns of American history as the Vandals creep forward to transform the area into a bloodbath. Meanwhile, in Washington, the White House and the President's South fuming, those Texans born guardsmen, Burr, not one of those dudes, ought to touch one of them. Wallace screamed, I understand, sir, but they just can't let the Vandals in. They can't turn the countryside into a slaughterhouse. They're just stuck, sir. Burr responded. Wallace Burr watched together the standoff, which had been going on for about two hours up to that point, and inflated the fears and anxieties of the men. An hour later, a breakthrough for the country occurred. The leader of the Vandals backed down as they saw the potential reinforcement of another platoon of military police. Rather than risking the gunfire, the Vandals broke apart, retreating from the potential battleground. Local state and federal authorities are investigating any links to the Vandals and his members. On the other side of the country, President Wallace handed the National Security Advisor a cigar to celebrate the sustained victory. They called Vandals for a reason. 5% are judicial ammo. It was a long, the wait was long, arduous, even just as the daily tasks of the president become exhausting for President Walls. However, no matter what level of exhaustion he was at, anger flowed through the veins of the president, coursing through him with every flash of a camera and every reporter screaming from outside his office. Did you authorize the shooting of President Walls, surrounded by a team of the best attorneys within the United States of America? Law professors at Harvard, those who had been defending the previous presidents, some of them with shiny gold awards, all of them had assembled within the Oval Office to prepare a defense for the president of the United States, dealing with the possible removal of office after a massacre that sustained the nation. Gentlemen, as you all know, these are difficult times that we live in. And I firmly believe that we have, I've done what I can to embolden this nation after decades of fear and mistrust. But now, I'm sure as you've seen, the media's turned this whole thing into a circus, and with me is the biggest punchline of the joke. And the House already called against me. I need your help. From the old dudes in the Senate. What can we do, the President said, uh, to begin the discussions? After those discussions not only began, but stretched on for hours, everyone in the White House felt like they were subject to being torn apart by the horde of news, journalists, and protesters that had formed within the Capitol over the past few days. Whether it was Roxy in the walls of Robert Byrd's office, or when Laura Lee and Wallace dropped the bowl of soup she had just been made from the fright of seeing a reporter pressed up against the window behind her, the White House was torn apart, and in a state of fear and anxiety as the only noise that surrounded or sounded were the telephone ringing, the lawyers discussing with the yelling president behind the closed doors of the Oval Office, and the onslaught of angry citizens and relentless reporters harassing the surrounding area. Finally, the president and his team of attorneys emerged from the Oval Office and came to a group of knights looking to the wage battle against the castle next door, with pens and legalistic language as words and shields. Or swords and shields. Now, no scare tactic from the media could slow down the defendant and his partner in court. And the defendant wants war, they'll get it. Also, we, I did do temp tax, uh, tax, temp tax cut. Smaller surplus, but um, we have some reserves and we get slightly, slightly, slightly higher growth. So it is what it is. Our dang core. 
The air inside the Senate chamber today was heavy, tense, and somewhat. Sometimes you could feel the anger present in the room. However, at least it wasn't stale. President Wallace looked around at his jury, the most powerful legislative body in the United States federal government, and it all seemed to look back at the defendant. The senior most experienced Supreme Court justice had taken the head of the trial, and soon proceedings were read again. However, despite the ongoing situation, Wallace knew one thing. If anything, do not be scared. Do not be a coward. Do not let anyone sway you to falling. If anything, be angry. May the Senate of the United States of America rise for the Pledge of Allegiance as the Supreme Court Chief Justice spoke. Everyone rose to recite the pledge, including President Wallace, laying his hand on his heart in pride for his nation, speaking loudly and confidently. Please take your seats, the judge ordered. Today, the United States Senate will begin proceedings for the H Res Resolution 519, formally entitled the impeaching of President George Wallace, in conjunction with the submittance of evidence provided by the House of Representatives. It is now the Senate's duty to proceed with the investigations of United States President George C. Wallace after the occurrence of the Little Rock Central High Massacre to investigate the possibility of mismanagement, resulting in the deaths of 14 students and the injury of 36 others. Walsh was growing more frustrated by the minute, having to watch the old man fumble around and wading through the these proceedings. It was an innocent man, he knew it, and those darn senators couldn't see it then the United States is doomed. The prosecution in this case, the representative chosen to represent the federal investigation, shall proceed in stating their opening argument. The opening argument of the prosecution was an absolute disaster in the eyes of President Wallace, at least. Accusations of potential action waste by attribu attribution of the President's fervent and segregationist belief causing gosh darn massacre when he wasn't even in the same state for it. Or better yet, President Wallace's administration led a disastrous man in handling the situation, which resulted in the deaths of several innocents. The defense in this case, President Wallace and his legal team, shall make their opening statements. And there is a stark difference between the National Guard and President Wallace. Therefore, the blame lies within the actions of mismanagement of local powers. In conclusion, the protest group that formed Little Rock was illegal, and thus received the full implication of the law. Oh, that seems like a wrong one to do. I guess technically you'd be right. Maybe, but they're not really protesting. Them, but they can, uh, they're protesting. They didn't have the option to do that, so. The actions of this manager of local powers. What is going to ruin support for the other guy, but whatever. National Guard. Yeah, I mean, it's local powers, I mean, you know. It's a state's issue on the high ground. <laughs> so Dr. Sadowski, the doctor of law and graduate from Harvard University who is serving as a leading defense attorney, finally sat down after a long hammering into the Senate over the beginning of the trial. After the little man though took a seat, the Senate responded to the opening with silence. Some more inexperienced politicians may have been intimidated, however, heck, he was scared by the imposing dread that followed, but not George C. Wallace, no, President Wallace. Still by a single thought that journeyed through his mind, the roaches are scared. Wallace took a good long look to enjoy uh, his first victory in what he believed would be a complete landslide of a trial, to be quite, to be quite honest, though. Wallace thought if there were any time to enjoy this little deal, it'd be now. Sadowski leveled the opening of the prosecution with nailing the reasoning behind his innocence, attempting to influence or return the reason for the most powerful lawmaking body in the free world after a complete trial by media already seemed to have occurred. However, unlike Dr. Sadowski, Wallace had no effect, which he held dear to his heart. There wasn't any reasoning with his blood-sucking politicians in Washington, especially when riled up against the man who tore them and their anti-American antics down. Who's to say that some of the senators up there are plotting not to listen for the entire trial up until the final vote, where the name Wallace will ring out to them and they'll vote guilty, no matter, with any luck, the uh, Supreme Court... Chief Justice up there is going to ensure that this remains as fair as possible, and none of the circus acts that his opposition has thrown out so far will endanger his chances. Wallace knew that this was just the first battle in an entire war. Nevertheless, if this battle was won, Wallace and Sadowski were going to make sure that none of the characters in here looking to tear him down will get the chance. Point one for Wallace. For the witnesses, wall. The Supreme Court just, Chief Justice was starting to speak, uh, stating the prosecution and the defense of each led their inten intentional or initial foundational arguments. Now, the judge should move forward to the cross-examination of the witnesses. As it stands, as it stands, in the United States law, the prosecution shall begin a cross-examination first. Great thought, Wallace. Now they're going to get the blacks to go up there and cry about their friends. Dr. Sadowski worked to calm the president, whispering that until they get a picture of you, with a rifle pointed at those students who had nothing to do with this. The first one uh, the prosecution caught up was that National Guardsman, Douglas N. McConnell, the one who was too scared to do his order. Some representatives from New York was in charge of questioning the man. Corporal McConnell, you expressed a great deal of emotional turmoil following the bloodshed at the Little Rock Central High School. Who would you say you're most frustrated at after all of this? The senator asked. Well, you see, sir, that's a lot of, but you could say that frustration within myself can be pointed towards one, some of the men that day, but more importantly, the ones who fought the protesters, who wouldn't let the National Guardsmen present do the job. And, well, I'm frustrated in myself for having been so confusing at all. McConnell responded, got him. Sadowski whispered to Wallace, knowing that a corporal was raised to respect authority and would be scared speaking against the commander chief, his high superior. The prosecution would now like to call for Mr. Percy Jameson. Boom, the New York representative. That media sensation, the black kid who survived all the shootings. Let's see where this goes. Thought Wallace, Mr. Jameson, would you point towards the policy of segregation held by the Wallace administration against African Americans such as yourself and the rest of our friends who died that day as being a, a direct cause for this massacre, asked the senator. Uh, <clears throat> 
Oh yeah, well my friends and I, we are uh, very, very upset about the men who fired on us that day, especially the officers out there who ordered it. Jameson responded, thinking that a young kid like him would point blame at the President of the United States in a full room full of hundreds of the most powerful lawmakers in the land, big mistake for them. They're winning the case for us. They're doing, they're doing it. They're winning. I don't know who we are. Our time to fight. The Supreme Court just was allowing a brief period for the defense to gather its potential plan for the cross-examination of the evidence presented by the prosecution. Sadowski and Wallace knew that they had gained some ground in the prosecution's cross-examinations, but the case can't survive on the holds within the prosecution alone. The men had been sent to their deaths for it less. Now it's time to gather a solid plan surrounding the next period of the trial. Sadowski had generated a plan he and the rest of the team called brilliant, as it looked like they were going about to start patting each other on the back. Sadowski was going to call upon the unnamed staff member within the administration to get railed into the man, and to try to psych him out into the revealing faulty memories regarding anything even possibly connecting the administration or the president to the ordering of opening fire in regards to the current laws of segregation in school areas. That way it can show a great deal of inconsistency of information provided by such witnesses, and limiting the potential for a prosecution. Next, he was going to, of course, call the first lieutenant, Victor Thornton, to a stand. Thornton. Already seems up his own butt about his innocence about shooting a bunch of kids, so we used him. We can show that the peaceful protests among the African American students were there were a lot more bloody than the media claims to be. Plus, if they're disgusted, no matter what, Thorns seems will be in the pride of his own actions, distancing us from those orders in all regards of things go the other way. Wallace took a few moments to think about the plan, yet when an idea struck him, Sadowski, we aren't going to use a kid, Jameson. Uh, Wallace said, well, we weren't planning to. Why? He responded. Because we poke holes in his claims, we succeeded in showing that he and the media blew this credibility out of proportion, and showed that my policy about segregating is their kind is right, and showing that they can't be trusted. Sadowski and the legal team had to take a minute to process Wallace's radical proposal for defense, because it can actually make sense due to the segregation argument, but the time was running out. His testimony has been made relevant on accounts of his fallacious memory and character. Thus, our anonymous staff member has been, uh has been proven invalid while First Lieutenant Thornton moved the motion. Those told we lose political power. Some small portion of senators will pledge to support impeachment. <laughs> I don't remember which one I chose. I probably chose that one, the top one we just chose like last time, but the bell's told. Thus ends a concluding statement offered by the defense of the President George C. Wallace. Both parties involved in H. Resolution 519, once more titled Impeaching President George Wallace, has offered the testimony in an effort to settle the case of the removal of President George C. Wallace from his position in office as President of the United States. Here withstanding, the United States Senate shall now proceed to act as jury in an official decision between the innocence and guilt held by the George C. Wallace and the potential mishandling of the duties as President. But first, we must offer an intermission between now and the upcoming final vote. President Wallace and his legal team realized the town was running out and gathering potential supporters against those looking to destroy the name of George C. Wallace forever. However, it would be unwise to treat the intermission as a mere break to catch your breath and make any last prayers. No, this intermission was about to be one of the most dynamic points of the entire trial, according to Sadowski. And Wallace enjoyed the prospects of a potential victory being in the grasp, no matter how desperate the situation may have been at the time. Thus, Sadowski and the rest of the team began plotting there and scheming of the pr for the president, while Wallace himself enjoyed the quietness. Fine, those old a-holes won't be on the guard. Oh, the how they'll realize their mistake in an early conviction of the one and only George C. Wallace. So, oh, how they'll realize he didn't want any of those kids dead. Oh, how the taste of progress will be sweet once he claws his way out of here. On the other end of the table, the team of attorneys were worried. The estimates estimations or in concluding enough results had they done enough to secure the president's victory or anything close to it only time can tell safe mvp far right leaning mvp was on the hunt a break from the ongoing tensions and decisions regarding the final vote had arrived wallace and his team tended to look valiant or valiant under pressure but the cracks were visible luckily for them the same happened to be true for the other side the senators acting as a jury happening to be dealing with one of the most stressful and difficult and controversial votes of their lifetimes having said that the darker sides of such supposedly valiant leaders of the country were beginning to show everywhere shadows lie everywhere when the light of the innocent is stuffed from the world one of the attorneys on the team defending wallace beckoned him closer to him protecting against the inquisitive ears in the room Finally, Wallace had gone close enough to hear what the man was so worried about telling him. The news he had heard back was well worth the effort. Some of the senators aligned with the right wing of the National Progressive Party had been discussing voting in favor of the impeachment and removal of Wallace from the office. Wallace nearly fell out of his chair, crushed over the news. The treason, the betrayal, and those senators had no honor left at all. Effing vultures, why wouldn't they help me? They supported me in everything that's happened so far. Wallace whispered loudly, the lawyer seeing tears well up in the president's eyes. So the best estimate I can offer you is that if this vote happens to condemn you anyway, they do not want to be lumped in with those that wish to support you, sir. The president had contained himself from smashing the top of the uh, table with his fist. This, it wasn't right. They were allies. Heck, some of them were his effing friends. People you shake hands with and talk about the big game with. Wallace thought, ah, fine, fine. Dudes want to kick a dog while it's down, fine. What are options here? Wallace asked, well, we could attempt to organize a small meeting in order to win back base on virtue, sway them from their current mindset, or... The attorney said, or effing what, Wallace asked. I'm not sure, sir. What happens if we say no? Because right now, I mean, we have so much. We have a 79. We need them. Let's see what happens. 
If it doesn't go well, well, we've already called its commands once, we'll do it again. Discussion of the Democrats. With another intercession came another discussion of the potential strategies in garnering favor among the leeches and the former Otar calling themselves Senators of the United States. Here the National Progressive Party has managed to fare well in recent years with the rise of a president of the same party, but Wallace knew the sad truth that they won't be able to rely on everyone from just the MPP, especially those who already hated Wallace's guts despite him being the reason for the successes. Dr. Sadowski and the President Wallace had talked between one another on the potential action they needed to take. Together they saw the same unfortunate truth, and in that truth the potential need for redirection. However, where one ally may fall, more rise. The RDs may be harboring promises of stability and steady progress for un truly united America. However, what about the underbelly of such claims? What about those strong conservatives among Democrats, the ones who promise a constituents a free and liberty-filled life during their time being one of the two greatest representatives of their, sta of their state to the Union? What if such sympathetic characters manage to be swayed under the pleas of a bullied and harassed southerner who has fought gallantly in protecting the freedoms for the people of the United States? The media has always destroyed has already destroyed any sense of peace in the realm of private life, why, and why allow the political partisanship to tear apart a genuine and honest man looking to provide for a better life for the true patriots out there who hold such traditions dear? A plan was organized, and these Democrats would hear the cries of the president and surely come running towards his support, right? You know, there's a catch, Sadowski said. You're growing a base of supporters out there in the Senate, watching the proceedings in your defense if they catch you trying to win over RDs, even if they were Democrats who were close to the right wing of the NPP anyway. They ain't going to be happy. A gamble. The centerpiece of the lot's ability to exploit the nature of chance to bring someone to the top or absolutely destroy them. And now the president had uh, measured just how to play out this one out. No. There's only four of them. Well, the burn of rejection. President Wallace has been going over the trade analyses all day, combined with reviewing the brief history of diplomatic action taking place between the wealthy countries who had suddenly turned heel, becoming interested in the Pact with the United States. In other words, President Wallace has been begging for a distraction from the mess of paperwork on his desk. However, um, <clears throat> a sudden slamming of three knocks against the door knocked the President off guard as a sudden answer to his request. Come in, yelled the President. J. William Fulbright rushed in, approaching the desk with a hand, handing a statement to the President. You're going to want to read this over, sir. To George C. Wallace, President of the United States, your proposals to unite the nation surrounding the Japanese sphere of influence is as respectable as it is outreaching for your country. Throughout the co-prosperity sphere, innumerable cases of suffering produced from the actions of the Japanese military and government have occurred. It's unfortunate to have to bear witness to these atrocities at such a close distance as Indian government must. However, an escalation of conflict within the Empire of Japan would provide subsequent conflicts with the people of India in front of such occurrences. Such a possibility is now within the grasp of the Indian nation's interests, and a coalition of economic value in effort to bring together the members of the organizations of the free nations per possibly resort into a loss of profit and already ailing global economy would produce suffering for a great number of Indian population. We simply cannot allow the risk to disrupt our promises to the Indian people have a free and independent future with such ties, and thus we will not be attending the conference occurring at Perth, nor the results of such actions and such conferences. With peace and prosperity in mind, the government of the Indian nation. Darn it, another frontline loss, Wallace said, fleeing the piece of paper across his desk. I want you to bring it up to you as soon as I received it, sir, to make sure you knew. Fulbright said before being interrupted with Wall stating, It's alright, Fulbright, you did your fine job fine. Just go back to making sure the rest of the nation will be in attendance, alright? Don't want to lose any more pro profitable countries like this from the deal. Fulbright nodded his head silently before exiting the room. Oh well. That doesn't make any sense. Like, you are going to be alone in the world against Japan. That's incredibly short-sighted, but economic aid for India? Wells have been eagerly waiting the State Department's proposal for an economic assistance package for India. And the finished proposal on his desk was indeed jaw-dropping. India was the crown jewel of this proposal to create a single trade pact to link the free economies of Asia together, but it would become the price and nearly exorbitant one. Unlike Australia and Central America, India remains a desperately poor country with a population more than double the size of the United States and with no existing American corporate presence. It makes it a desperate need for infrastructure with the dearth of local private capital to fund it, leaving the massive bill squarely with the American government and taxpayer. Walls could hear the pun screaming for blood when the face of the potential cost of winning India's participation in the Perth Agreement, and yet successfully surrounding Japan would be an undeniable strategic victory. A wall of, wait, so we have we did this one. We complete this one. A business this is a business of charity. Hmm. We try it. They already rejected us though. Screw it, we'll try it anyways. Indian market, if you want to read this one, please go to Hezbollah. The Fault of Fate. Finally, the intermission was coming close to the prosecution and the defense. Now, rather than whispering and cozying up to the smug politicians, President Wallace and his team of some of the best legal minds in the country could finally bear witness to the fate that their work had consigned to them. Two. For President Wallace, the fate or the fall from presidency was spelled doom for the legal team just the same. Wallace's foot had been tapping incessantly under the table upon which his legal team sat. All this work within the office of the president, all this effort, all the good I've done, and now they want to stab me in the back of the animals. They disgust of it all. President Wallace thought to himself, he felt his chest tight. Maybe it was all the stress of it all, affecting his heart at this point. Maybe it was a Red Bull. No, that was me. Maybe it was while it was difficult getting to breathe. The president stood resolute, even as the vein pushed out along his neck, kind of like mine. 
in my head too. I did everything I could for the American people. But you know, they want to paint me as some sort of monster at the end of the day. The counting of votes and occasional yeah and nay interrupt the president's trains of thought, causing him to tighten his grip on the tables they sat at, now showcasing white knuckles to the entirety of the Senate. With every vote, the anxiety, fear, and anger grew within Wall's temple. How could they do this, he thought. Do they realize the embarrassment of a second president removed from office in a row? Plus, what about LeMay? He's the one they really think is going to succeed in bringing some imaginary greatness to America. The man can't run politics correctly, and good luck getting him to crap rainbows in a successful economy for the American people. Wallace waited. His legal team waited. His whole cabinet waited. The entirety of the American people seemed to be glued to their TVs watching and waiting for what was to become the president. Sadowski had better have won this. And look at that. All 79 vote from favor for the birth conference. Actually, 80. 84. 92. Like, it's extremely bipartisan. Where fires spread, foundations fall. Wait, we are lost. Oh, this is not good. Uh, the Chief Justice boomed out of the Senate chamber floor. The official votes for the guilt or innocence found in regards to President George C. Wallace have been collected for a final estimate. President Falls Wallace found himself feeling a mix of dread, anger, and a feeling of sadness that edged along the lines of despair. Next to him, all of his attorneys sat nervously, especially Dr. Sadowski. The men could hardly focus, but by the end, they all heard two distinct phrases. Guilty, followed by more numbers, followed by returning guilty. President or former President Wallace's heart sank deep in his chest upon hearing the words fly from the Chief Justice's fat mouth, prompting the man to lower his head to the table he sat at. The President of the United States, for the first time in history, formally removed from the office after a trial initiated by the House of Representatives and the United States Senate. And for what? Miscommunication in the middle of a disaster? Former President Wallace had been escorted out of the building as the Senate came to be dismissed and the trial proceedings officially concluded. Outside of microcosm, the United, entire United States was shown half the crowds were cheering and crying success over the removal of Wallace from, from the presidency. Well, the others appeared that. Silent, seemingly destroyed over the loss of Wallace. In the White House, several men worked to help gather the President's belongings and personal FX to be brought to the White House. Inside, Wallace shook hands. Uh, of his closest cabinet members, but could hardly bring himself to face the rest who looked up to him as leader. As man sat on changing the face of America, the president, George C. Wallace, leader of the uh, right wing of the NPP and the strong man of modern American politics, forced out of office by law. In one of the final acts inside the White House, Wallace shook his hands with soon-to-be President Curtis May, his former running mate and vice president, before leaving alongside his wife, Lorreen Wallace, just destined to arrive back on home in Alabama. George and Lorene lie down in bed in Montgomery, Alabama, watching the swearing in of the President of May. I swear within my duties as President of the United States, I swear to rectify the mistakes of the Wallace administration and settle the great risks of recognition. I can only help and pray to remain a man in better standing than the former President George C. Wallace. Wallace responded by turning off the TV and rolling over to go to sleep. We lost Lorene? No, you didn't. No. 79. 79 senators. 79. He didn't even do anything. They were out to get him. This was all rigged. But, unfortunately, I've got to end this episode here, and uh, we will be back at the beginning of the next episode. Where we will uh, not make sure that there's no unfair player. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.